this video I am going to show you how to use the CNC router uh, to prepare a file and set it up to do the whole lot basically. What you will need to do before starting this is make sure you've saved it out as an STL file from SOLIDWORKS. So that's a triangulated model mesh, uh, something you won't be able to edit in SOLIDWORKS but it's a common format, same as on the 3D printers. Now it's also obvious that you need to make sure what you're going to uh, route is routable. In other words, it is kind of two and a half dimension machine. So in other words, it can get height, it can do le length, width and height, uh, but you won't be able to do any overhangs or anything. So just come and talk to Sim or me about the, the model that you want to do beforehand if you're not sure about it. So, right, first of all, and apologies for not doing it on a screen recording. Um, we don't have the software on these router computers. So we need to open up two programs first of all. It's important to bear in mind the order in which you do it. First of all, start menu, programs, Boxford Camp, CAD CAM. So if you double click on that, you get this interface here. It's worth noting we've got two router mills and they come up separately here. So you need to identify which one's which. 9615 is on the left, that's the one I'm going to be using. So we'll click on that. So that opens up the printer driver as it were, uh, which we're going to use later. But it's important to have this one open first so that the second program which converts the model into a tool path, so in other words a set of coordinates for the printer, it needs to send it to this program. So it's good to have this open and minimised already. So we'll just minimise that. Now you need to make sure we've got two icons on the desktop for the other program, Geocam it's called. One says use this version, so it's pretty obvious we use this version. Okay, when that opens up, find your file. And it comes open like this. So you can have a look around, make sure it's right. Check the dimensions as well, make sure you're um, sure that's the right dimensions in millimeters. And then we'll go to next. Now, this is where we set the orientation of that model. So the plane is an important feature here. There's two sides to it, a blue and a yellow side. The blue is the top of the machine bed, as it were. So the tool will come down and carve away this object. So as it currently stands, that's obviously the wrong way around. Now over here, we've got the plane orientation. So you can choose the axis in which it's set. So that's wrong, that's wrong. Okay, that looks right. But remember, the blue is the top down, so it's going to be the opposite to D, it's going to be B. Okay, one other thing is the height. You can see it's intersecting the plane in the middle. Now we need to make sure the machine knows this is on top of the plane, so we use this slider here. Slide it whichever way is correct, in this case it's down. You should see on the underside this intersection of triangles here, between the plane and the model. So that's now correct. Right, now we select the material preset. Uh, there's a whole load of settings on the router which will determine the type of cut. But uh, we'll use hardwood here. Even if you're using MDF, we'll almost always use hardwood as a good preset. So here we've got the model dimensions and here we've got the size of the material that we're going to need. So if you see the model is 150 mil long. Now I'm going to add 10 mil onto the width and the height. The reason is the, the cutting bit needs to be able to go right the way around and it tends to stop if it can't. If it goes outside of a model, it tends not to do that, so it will stop before. So if you've got a curve intersecting the edge, it will just have a, an abrupt end. It needs to go right the way around, so it needs a bit of overlap. So in the case of 150, we'll put 160. Uh, width is the height in this case, it's confusing, but just correspond this one here. 
So we've got 23.2. Now the MDF comes in standard sizes. So we've got 25 mil, 18 mil, 12 mil, 9 and 6. So most of the time we cut the thickest possible uh, MDF which is 25. So we don't add 10 mil onto that, it's just the thickness. And then the height the other way around is 45.2 plus 10, call it 55, it doesn't matter, it can be slightly less than 10. Okay, next up. Now, I've done it wrong. Okay, it's always a bit of trial and error, I can never remember which round it is. So we might have to actually swap the height, it is actually 25 and 55 here. better. Also just keep an eye out here, X and Y, later on you'll need to know which way around it goes in the machine. So if you'll notice the the machine bed has the, the long side of it is the X side. So this will go that way in the machine if you imagine the landscape. The same orientation as the uh, sacrificial bed that we'll be using in a bit. So now we can see it's correct. It is worth also noticing it scales it. By default, it scales it to fit the material. Now, we want to be accurate. We've just designed a whole load of stuff accurately to the right measurement, so we want it 100%. So uncheck that. That should be right. Now, it's a little bug, but that preview mesh that you saw in the last one just disappears if you change the scale. If you go back and forward, you'll see it again. And that looks fine. So make a note of these uh, measurements as well. Give these to Henry and he'll cut it out on the table saw. Right, now we've got this uh, fine tuning basically. It's, it's a bit, in case you need to calibrate it, get it absolutely spot on. You can, bearing in mind that this model is 23 something thick uh, and we're using a piece of 25 mil MDF, so you can specify whether it goes milled from the top or milled from the bottom. So, generally, if you have it low down, it will get as close as possible to the piece of sacrificial wood that we're going to have underneath it, and you'll have a pattern cut on, cut on the top. Quite often, if you don't adjust it, it just doesn't cut the top out. It's a bit of trial and error sometimes, but I recommend just trying to shift it all the way down like that. Now, you've got to select the cutting bit that we're going to use on the router. Now, we tend to only use one type, uh, which is a good all-rounder for roughing and finishing. So, to get a really good finish, you can swap the bit around halfway through. So, it'll do all the roughing with a big, crude bit, and then a fine bit at the end will finish it. But we'll just use the one. So, make a note here, it's 9615, as is the machine. 6.35 millimeter radius. Now 6.35 is a quarter of an inch, which is a common size of router bit. And radius means it's got a ball-ended cutting bit. So it's not flat on the bottom, it's round, if you have a look. So that is correct, and that's the same on both of those. From here on, for a little while at least, there's no need to adjust any other parameters. It's all fine as a default. Until you get to this thing here. Now we press compute and it will calculate the toolpaths. It takes a little while. Then is a uh, representation of how the bit will move. Then if you want to watch it with uh, a graphical display of the bit and make sure it doesn't hit anything you can press simulate. When I say it doesn't hit anything it tends to flash up in purple the whole thing if you get it wrong. Uh, so in other words, if you've got a piece of wood that's higher than 25 mil or something like that, it tends to uh, hit the side of a bit and it won't work, but it'll, it'll uh, be pretty obvious here. So you can press play. And this is the simulation of what it will look like. Yeah, that looks good to me, so I'm going to go next. 
Now you've got a save that file as something called a G file. A G file is quite a common file across all uh, CNC and 3D printers. It's basically a specific file of uh, toolpath, so the coordinates of how the arm moves. And they are specific to each machine. So we'll save it here. It'll go, we can put it in the same place. Just remember where it is in case you need to use it again. Now, because we've got that other thing open, it will automatically send it to it. Repeat the simulation. You can close this window, it's hidden behind it. And now we're ready to cut. So provided you've got the uh, you've got the piece of wood from Henry, myself or Sim, we then need to stick it onto a piece of sacrificial wood. So this is how you do it. Once that's done, you're ready to print. So you can press this button here. Now you'll probably find if you haven't used the machine since it's been switched on, it will say machine not responding. You'll need to just uh, configure the port. It it's uses a technology from before USB where it automatically recognizes. Sometimes you just need to remind it where, where the machine is. So if you go to settings, by the way, if, sometimes you won't need to do this, it will automatically recognize, so you can skip to the next point. So we do it from this, program, uh, this window. If you go to settings, current user, administrator, it allows you to change settings on it. You don't need a password, so just OK that. And then back to settings, preferences, where it says communications tab, collect that. Now it would say not connected. You need to just select COM1 for it to work. OK that. And now it should work when you press this. So now you want to stick your piece of uh, wood that's just been cut out onto one of these sacrificial boards. Now it's important to choose a board that's uh, in good condition, especially if you're going to have a small piece of wood like this. If it's uh, a big CNC cut then one of these slightly older ones like one of these where you can see it's been worn, it's been cut away a bit. It's fine if you're going to have a big piece of wood but a small piece like that needs a firm grip with double sided tape. So grab the tape and stick it firmly down on the top left hand corner. And remember also, I mentioned earlier on in the uh, video to bear in mind what orientation it goes. So work out which direction the X is on the bed. So in this case it's going parallel with this board. So not like that, it's going to be like that. So really you only need two bits on this. Scratch it off. And stick it on. Now just get it lined up by feeling around the back of the uh, piece of wood like that. Make sure it's nice and flush with the board. Then you want to put it on the floor and stamp on it. Probably best to do it on a rubber mat and like what I'm doing so you don't slip about. So now we're ready to manufacture. You want to press this button here. Now it asks you to just reset the machine so you need to twist the red emergency stop clockwise a bit and it should come out and push the big blue button just underneath it. So now it'll ask you to auto home, just press that there. This will take a little while. So select vacuum table as the active clamp. Uh, before fitting the workpiece it's worth just measuring it first just to check it is the size you think it should be. So it should be 31 in this case, I find it 31.2. Now when you come to fitting it just be aware of the fact that it's going to get sucked down. Get it lined up on the back like this and then give it a little pat down just to make sure it's sucked down properly on the vacuum bed. That's good. Now close the 
guard and lock it on both sides. Now it's a chance to write 31.2 or whatever thickness you've got. And it's ready to go. So just so you know, you can control it from this green button instead of pressing OK from now on. It'll uh, set the tool in the middle here, just expecting you to fit the tool, but we don't need to do that. And then the next time it'll start right in the bottom left. It's your last chance to check before pressing that green button again. So turn it right down to next to zero. If you have it at zero, it won't move at all. Uh, gives you a chance just to make sure everything's fine. Uh, we sped up the video now because it's all fine, but it's worth having your hand over the emergency stop just in case something isn't stuck down properly. It normally comes off in the first instance as soon as the, the tool hits the piece of work. Um, as you can see here, it's actually not quite touching the top of work until the second layer. Now it's cutting away. So if you want to watch it sped up, I'll leave it with you. Uh, that's all. Well, remember when it's finished, it will say make another and you can open it up and remove it and take it off the sacrificial bed at that point.